Good morning. <sighs> Good morning. Come on in. What's up, y'all? Dot, Georgia, Marge, and Steve. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to have you in this morning. So forgive the hat, but it is a, uh, <clears throat> it most certainly is an advertisement this morning. Did not sleep well. Was having a weird dream last night. I've had it a couple of times over the years. Dinosaurs in my backyard. Most importantly, a T-Rex that we kept in the goat pen. I have lots of questions about this. So needless to say, I didn't sleep all that well. Um, and so this morning's prayer is, is indeed brought to you by the Black Rifle Coffee Company. So thank you to Black Rifle for keeping me awake, along with uh, everyone who makes my consumption of Black Rifle possible. Here's to you. So, yeah. I just plow through the work this morning and uh, hopefully I'll still be awake at 3 o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> oh, excuse me. So tell me something good. Weekend's coming up. Tell me something positive as uh, we give just another couple of seconds for folks to roll on in here. So for us, because everybody wants a pig update, so Caleb officially gets shipped off to do uh, to to do the farrowing, um, and uh, he ordered this heat mat. Um, we'd gone back and forth about it. We're always worried about heat issues inside the barn, just because anything that goes sideways with a heat issue can potentially cause a fire. So he wanted to get this mat. I was a little. Uh, we studied it a little bit. Okay, it'll be fine. I ordered the thing. Went in there like it's back ordered. I'm like, this boy's gonna kill me. So, but just got word it should show up tomorrow, right before she goes into labor. So, so that's my positive. I woke up this morning and whew, I don't need my son hating me. So, and good for you, Belinda. Good for you. Yeah, mine's loaded down with cream. Of course, that's what you get when you're a dairy farmer. I mean, I go through a creamer quick. Oh, you get kittens tomorrow, Georgia. That's fun. <laughs> Michelle, cheers. Oh, and Tommy gets her shot this morning. Good for you, Tommy. I'm jealous. We need a way to, like, celebrate that. Everybody in the church that gets a vaccine, dong. We need to ring the bells or something. I don't know. And I did get an email um, from County Health Department that said they've put me on the list. So that's a, so that's a win. We'll see, what, uh, we'll see what comes of that. But as soon as I can get it, I'm going. And if you know me, you know that's not my jam when it comes to needles, but I am going. So let's get going this morning. You all just roll your uh, roll your good stuff up into the comments while we while we get ready to pray. So today is January the 28th. Oh boy. We are on page 121 in the book entitled Common Prayer. We are also on the Common Prayer app and on commonprayer.net. And so whether you're gathering with us live, gathering with us later in the day, um, or just going back through the archive, I see you all out there, going back through the archive and checking out what, what we did. Um, We're really grateful um, that you've joined in today. Thank you so much for making prayer a little part of your day. And so I'm going to invite you to quiet your hearts as we ready ourselves to come into the presence of our Lord. And let us pray. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. O 
And together we bend the knee in word, as together we pray the collect for the week of January 24th. God of all people, your arms reach out to embrace everyone who calls upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, tearing down barriers that keep us isolated and apart, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And on this January 28th, we get very much a resurrection antiphon. As together we say, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive glory and honor. And holding this thought close to heart, we read the words of Psalm 138, verses 1 through 5. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. To our antiphon again, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive glory and honor. All right, so our first reading for this morning comes from Genesis chapter 19. Um, it calls for verses 1 through 29. If we find a point where we might be able to break this up into a couple readings, um, we'll do that. But we'll begin reading, and then we'll see where it takes us. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them, and bowed himself with his face to the earth, and said, My lords, please turn aside to your servant's house, and spend the night, and wash your feet. Then you may rise up early and go on your way. They said, No, we will spend the night in the town square. But he pressed them strongly, so they turned aside to him and entered his house. And he made them a feast and baked unleavened bread, and they ate. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people to the last man, surrounded the house. And they called to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Lot went out to the men at the entrance, shut the door after him, and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not yet known any man. Please bring them out to you, and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, Stand back. And they said, This fellow came to sojourn, and he has become the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. Then they pressed hard against the man Lot and drew near to break the door down. But the men reached out their hands and brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. And they struck with blindness the men who were at the entrance of the house, both small and great, so that they wore themselves out groping for the door. Then the men said to Lot, Have you anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city? Bring them out of this place. For we are about to destroy this place, because the outcry against this people has become great before the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-law, who were to marry his daughters, 
up, get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-law to be jesting. As morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, lest you be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he lingered. So the, two, so the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand, the Lord being merciful to him, and they brought him out and set him outside the city. And as they brought them out, one said, Escape for your life. Do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the hills, lest you be swept away. And Lot said to them, O oh, no, my lords. Behold, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have shown me great kindness in saving my life. But I cannot escape to the hills, lest the disaster overtake me and I die. Behold, this city is near enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Let me escape there. Is it not a little one? And my life will be saved. He said to him, Behold, I grant you this favor also, that I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Escape there quickly, for I can do nothing till you arrive there. Therefore the name of the city was called Zoar. The sun had risen on the earth when Lot came to Zoar. Then the Lord rained on Sodom and Gomorrah sulfur and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities, and all the valley, and all the inhabitants of the cities, and what grew on the ground. But Lot's wife behind him, looking back, looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. And he looked down toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the valley. And he looked, and behold, the smoke of the land went up like the smoke of a furnace. So it was that, when God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had lived. This is the word of the Lord. Not the way any of us really want to start our day. This story is rife with problems. Um, certainly there are overtones of sexuality that are happening here, but, you know, but mostly, you know, there is, and there is this exchange of very bad behavior. Um, you know, this mob that surrounds the house of Lot and then Lot saying, well, here, take my daughters instead, as if that was a righteous thing to do. Um, but Jesus, and this teaches us one of the things about, you know, one of the ways that I've learned to read, read the Bible. Um, thank you, Marge. I agree. Um, Jesus looks back and the New Testament looks back and says, well, how might followers of Jesus interpret this story? Um, and Jesus says that this is about hospitality. This is New Testament. This is not some theologian. This is not some, you know, some Bible scholar or thinker. This is Jesus who's saying that Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed because they failed to show hospitality, failed to create a space where people could just be themselves. Um, and we see a little bit of this in the story. Might it be a, a hair of a rewrite? I mean, there are things going on in here. Maybe. But Jesus says this is how we read this story in such a way that it can become gospel for us. That when we fail to show hospitality, when we seek to take advantage of others, in all the ways that we can do that, when we take advantage of others, we are less than what God has called us to be. And in that way, we become we become the agents of our own destruction. And so I invite you, if this story is bothering you, make sure you get the words of Jesus into you also. Go back and look. Um, it's a challenging story, no doubt, and not the way I want to start the day. However, um, it is a call to greater hospitality, greater acceptance of others. And in that way, maybe we can hear the echoes of something life-giving. And we'll continue on. Get reading into, into uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 14. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering, offering excuse me, and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you, as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, 
but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. to our antiphon. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive glory and honor. In our reflection for today, we read the early Christian apologist Tertullian. And if there was a grumpy Uncle Bernie Sanders of the early Christian church, it was most assuredly Tertullian. But in so many ways, um, he he is a remarkable theologian. Not infallible, but a remarkable one. Um, And so I just always think of him as the grumpy uncle. And he wrote in the second century these words. It is not fitting to serve at the same time the symbol of Christ and the symbol of the devil, the power light and the power darkness. One and the same soul cannot serve two masters. And how may we wage war without the sword that God himself has taken away from us? How can we learn the use of the sword when our Lord said that he who raised the sword would perish by the sword? And how can the sons of peace take part in combat? It is not fitting to serve at the same time the symbol of Christ and the symbol of the devil, the power light and the power darkness. And though dichotomies and bipolarities often find themselves unhelpful, um, they do provide clarity. So it's a call to us. Where is our service and where is our loyalty? Um, And these these are excellent questions for us to ask as believers. We turn now to our prayer list. Um, And for another day, hooray, hooray, um, we have no further updates. Um, And so friends, let us simply do our duty and do our joy to pray for those who who find themselves on our list. So let us pray. Yeah, Lord, we didn't want to start here this morning. Well... Let me say, I didn't want to start here this morning. Or sometimes it's easy for us to hold a Bible, wave it in front of people, say that we are people of the Bible. And Lord, most assuredly we are. We cherish these sacred words. But it's easier to say that than it is to actually read it and discover what often is hidden in there. And Lord, we would say, as we open these pages this morning, this story of Sodom and Gomorrah, which has troubled your church for generations, continues to trouble us today. Lord, we admit, we try to find some ways to make sense of it. That doesn't make it any less troubling. And so we would ask that you would help us to deal with this That you would help us to acknowledge and deal with this emotion that maybe we feel is reading it, this unsettledness in our souls, this 
discomfort. And just let that discomfort speak for a moment. Yet as we so often pray that maybe it'll help us to be a little bit more realistic and sober towards our, our own faith. To acknowledge what it is that we walk in. Not as a negative, but simply to, to be aware that faith is not an easy path and there are not super simple answers. That there are challenging and difficult questions that aren't answered in a morning or aren't answered in a small group session. Things are hard. There are things that will that will keep us uncomfortable. And that's okay. So Lord, help us to be okay with it. With okay okay with the feelings that rise up when we hear stories like Sodom and Gomorrah. But Lord, we also pray that you would help that you would remind us. Lord, the core of the gospel, however we feel, is always faith, hope, and love. It is always joy. It is always the kingdom. And so help us to lean into that and may the joy of the Lord indeed be our strength and keep us moving forward for at least today. And so we continue our prayers. Even in our discomfort, we offer up our prayers for those who seek strength today, strength for the place where they find themselves struggling in body, mind, and spirit. And we name them before you now and trusting that you are caring for your beloved children. And so we pray for Dave Cunningham and for Tom Cross, Brian Cunningham, Ann Wilson, Perry Lyons and Jeremy Dutterer, Alan Showalter, Sandy Suit, Savannah Price, Karen Anderson, Cart Denner, An Unspoken Request, Carolyn Yost, Baby Lacey, Jean Snyder, David Miller, Margie Snyder, An Unspoken Request, Richard and Deborah Hahn, Steve Moorhead, Joe Zentgraf, Terry Shavius, Jean Alexander, Jennifer Ramsey, for Caitlin, for Richard and Beatrice Hess, Linda Mayo, an unspoken request, Donna Rill, Marcia Brown, Betty Heath, Laurie Posey, Artis Tully, Richard Lindsay, Bruce Ludlow, Bob Scott, Helen McQuay, LaRue Newsbaum, Butch McCotter, the family of Tom Kurtz. Easter Dorsey, Debbie Hahn, Kathy and Dave Stebbins, the family of Jay Boyd, the family of Robert Cassily, for Laura Hess, the family of Sherry Armstrong, for BJ and Sam, Darlene Hayes, Doris Bortner, Rob Rickle, and for Diane, the family of Beverly Dutterer, for Joanne Buell, the family of Dennis Bitzel, Matt Cunningham, Julie Scher, family of Billy Barons, and for Burt Remmers. We say thank you for each of these children of God, and for their friendship, and for their trust in us. We also pray, our Lord, for the, for the children of God whom you have placed on our hearts individually this morning. And praying in the words of our Savior, we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus, you are known as both the Lion of Judah and the Sacrificial Lamb. As we follow you, we learn both mighty power and humble submission. Teach us when to imitate you as Lion and when as Lamb. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness. 
protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. So between the T-Rexes in my childhood backyard and Sodom and Gomorrah, this day is not off to the greatest start. But friends, I hope we can hear those words that like that, that discomfort and that tension will serve us if we can hold it in a way that is healthy, not to dwell on it and like be obsessed by it, not to ignore it and pretend it didn't happen, but just let that discomfort keep us on our toes a little bit. Um, and if we can do that, then where we're at will serve us. And so I invite you into the discomfort of those readings and of that day of, of where we're at today. And be sure that God, as he often does, I mean, shoot, we read last week, you know, he called it, we read uh, in worship this past Sunday, you know, Jesus calls them out of the boat. Discomfort's involved. It'll be okay. I promise we're going to be all right. So thank you. For, uh, thank you for hanging in this morning. There's a lot of you on this morning. I apologize for all of you who came on um, <laughs> and had to sort of deal with deal with everything this week. So just a quick, um, and I'll let you out of here. Um, so I'm not going to be on the next two days um, because I promised um, that it, I need to show up for my kids. So uh, so Belinda's going to be taken uh, tomorrow. And then uh, Stephen Dot, um, the, saint of, the saints of all things swine, are going to be covering for me on Saturday, just in case I'm in the middle of delivery, just to make sure that everything is good to go. Um, and so to all three of you, I say thank you so very, very much for covering. Um, and thank you all for continuing to support this work. Um, it is indeed a community, which means I just get to be a part of it. And that's what's so much fun. So friends, as we often say, whatever your weekend looks like, I pray it's a beautiful one for you. I'll be checking in with how things go. Um, we'll certainly be joining in with prayer as I'm, I am able. But I pray God's blessings on you, uh, on you today and in the days to come. So until we're back together tomorrow morning, peace and good, y'all.